449 has proved to be one of the most magical robots in the Chesapeake district, boasting an impressive auto design pivot mechanism and no handoff. Uh, they have come to become one of the pr premier uh, teams of the event, boasting two district event wins. Now we're about to dive in behind the bumpers and see what all is up with their robot. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more and apply. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. All right, so let's talk a little bit about your robot. You guys are well known for your note handoff, so why don't you guys explain that? Yeah, so uh, first off, we designed our robot to be a consistent amp and speaker pump. Um, so when the ring enters our robot, it enters through our under the bumper intake. So we designed our intake as under the bumper because first off, we wanted to be robust to collisions. We didn't want it to break like over the bumper intakes. But also, um, we it was also about the geometry because it's just packages a lot better into your robot. And um, you don't have to worry about having space in the robot to store the over the bumper intake. Um, the other thing is it allows for zero actuation cycles. So all you got to do is run the rollers. You don't have to have any other mechanical movement. Um, so yeah, after the ring enters the ground intake, it gets... Oh, also another thing about our intake, um, we want to maintain four points of contact with the ring at all times to prevent jamming. So you'll see that um, even during the handoff to our shooter, there's still always four points of contact. Okay, uh, so after it enters the intake, it gets funneled into our shooter. So um, we had some problems earlier with the um, ring getting like horizontally compressed. So what we do is we actually have a wiggle um, to let the ring expand. So John, do you want to show that? Yeah, so even if the ring comes in from the side and gets compressed, it the wiggle allows it to expand. Um, yeah, so that's all of it leading up to the shooter. All right. So, and then it heats up into this impressive pivot design. So why don't we go ahead and talk about that? Yeah, okay. So um, one thing about this is, first off, you'll notice that this handoff happens at our hard stop. And this is also the position for subwoofer shooting. So this means we can get really consistent cycles. And also we have a very consistent hand, okay? And um, even though our uh, subwoofer shooting is at hard stop, our pivot also allows us to shoot at further distances, like from the podium and stuff. Um, so you can like check out the pivot mechanism right here. So obviously this is like the most load um, mechanism on our robot. So we wanted to make sure it was really robust. We have like a 78 to one gear reduction with like a WCP SS um, gearbox. We have like a steel shaft, we have steel gears. We have an um, RT25 belt and pulley. So um, another thing is uh, last year we had a lot of problems with the chain losing tension and just like a bunch of backlash and problems. You can't run it as fast when you don't have as much tension. So you'll notice that first off, we are using belt and pulley. And um, second off, we have this uh, tensioner design so even though um, belts are less prone to losing tension, we can still maintain that strong tension and um, assure that we never lose that like competitive advantage uh, during the entire competition season. We always have the capability to easily restore any tension that we lose. The other thing is we used RT25 belt and pulley because um, this is uh, our first time using belt and pulley for such a major mechanism. So worst case scenario, if things don't go well, we can always change it out for number 25 belt, um, number 25 sprocket and chain. Okay, impressive, impressive. So you guys also have some impressive electronics work so on. So why don't you guys explain that for me? Yeah, so for the electronics, uh, this year was uh, pretty challenging for us because uh, this robot doesn't have a lot of space for the electronics, given that we have an under bumper intake um, and it's a smaller frame than we usually build. So. Uh, with 17 spark maxes on this robot, um, 
we had to find some clever ways to fit everything. Uh, we have our spark maxes for the drive arranged along the modules on the sides. We have the motor controllers for the feeder and shooter on the sides of our superstructure. And everything else is packaged onto a single belly pan brain pan combo. So what this board does is it allows us to utilize both the top and bottom space of a single board. Um, and we can kind of get like double the space efficiency with that without having to do anything with stacking or um, or anything like that to sacrifice accessibility. Um, that was a big problem for us last year, not being able to access the electronics because everything was packed too tightly. So we really made it a focus to um, try to split everything up. We have the PDH underneath the robot, um, as well as some of our um, software electronics components for vision and everything. Um, and um, that's pretty much it for the electronics. Uh, to go back to some of the mechanical stuff, uh, I also wanted to talk about our shooter. So we're shooting on four inch stealth wheels um, with half inch compression. Um, this was mostly uh, geometry that we got from Open Alliance in our own testing. Um, we also experimented with some other designs. We experimented with wheels from the side um, as well as full width uh, shooter wheels. Um, we eventually settled on the spin shooting because uh, with the top and bottom because we found that this gave us the best stability for the note flight um, for long distance shooting. But we did switch back and forth between the spin and the full width um, part way through the season. You can also take a look at the power transmission for the shooter over here. Um, right now it's powered by two Neos and one to two gearing. So it's double the speed of the, the wheels move at double the speed of the Neos. And we actually went through some iterations with this power transmission. Uh, we originally had really big gears connecting the wheels to each other. Um, and then we also went to a double-sided belt iteration. Um, and we just found throughout the season that this combination gave us the best um, energy efficiency. So the least energy lost to um, power transmission or anything like that. And also um, just the fastest spin-up time and most power. Um, the other thing for the shooter is the IR sensor. So we have two IR sensors um, on the side of our shooter plates. The first IR sensor is responsible for detecting the note. And the second one is for, um, is for detecting when the note gets too far into the feeder. So the first one is constantly tracking it and tells the drivers um, when we've intaked a note by rumbling the controller. And then the second one is going to tell the robot to back it out so it doesn't go into the feeder or into the shooter prematurely. Um, and then finally, we can talk about the climber. Nothing too fancy here. It's just a ThriftyBot two-stage telescope um, with the hooks at the top. Um, and everything's packaged nicely into this kind of two-inch long uh, package. So it doesn't take up too much space on the robot. Okay. And you guys are also known for some really impressive like auto pathings, auto uh, note cycling. So go ahead and let us talk about your process of making those work. So for autonomous, we use odometry only. Uh, this means that we're not using any vision readings or anything. We're just going directly off of the motor positions on the motor. And we found that this is extremely precise, even though it may not be accurate due to drift and other factors. But since it's extremely repeatable, what we do is we just end up fudging our path somewhat and it ends up really consistent. In order to generate our autonomous uh, curves, basically, we use a tool called Corio, which optimizes uh, which creates a time optimal trajectory to go or whatever waypoints we want to go to. So if you want to take a look, uh, this is our five piece auto. So we just go for the three center notes first. And we also use the obstacle feature in Corio to prevent us from ramming into the stage. And it also creates the best type of curve uh, in order to not hit that stage. We noticed with uh, path planner last year that we would have to spend a lot of time tweaking the uh, like curve and like the turning rate and the acceleration. But Corio takes that takes care of that all for you. And we don't we didn't really notice any like slipping on the carpet. And um, it like create it doesn't require much tweaking of the path after we already generated. It. Um, so for indexing an auto, it's basically the same thing as teleop. So whenever we go for a center line note. We do that jiggle that we were talking about earlier uh, in order to center the note just in case uh, if we intake it off center. But for our five piece auto, we don't do any jiggle. Uh, and we have the like cats tuned down enough to the point where 
the note just comes in centered for the first time and it, it, it just works. So currently working on a four piece helper for this event uh, with three center line notes and jiggling for each uh, note. Usually for our five piece uh, auto, we only shot from the subwoofer, but here we're gonna be shooting from farther away and hopefully we're gonna get it working for this event. All right. Well, on behalf of First Up to Sound, thank you guys so much for taking the time of the day and good luck to you guys for the rest of the competition. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to Kettering.edu first to learn more and apply.